code was generated and we have moved it to cube IDE. In project 3, we note a new folder called the utility, which includes the LP1 utility drivers that we saw previously. In addition, there is a new folder called LPBAM, which includes config.c, scenario build.c, and scenario config.c files, which are needed for our LPBAM application. We will open the .h file. Inside it, we can see the prototypes of functions needed to initialize LPBAM subsystem. You see, these are high level functions, for example, scenario init, scenario build, scenario link, and scenario start. We are going to call all these functions inside main.c. We can note that only link and start functions need to have the DMA channel handler passed as a parameter. We will now move to main.c and we are going to have these functions added as well as the related .h file. Once this is done, we are going to add two more functions. One for disabling the debug while being in stop mode, which helps to improve the power performances. And the second one is the HIL to enter in stop to mode, waking up on an interrupt. In this case, it will be DMA transfer complete interrupt. Now we want to condition the start of LP1 mode to button press. For that, we add some code. The idea behind is that after reset, an LED is blinking and after button press LED is stopped, we enter into the LP1 application and then system enters in stop to waking up on an ISR. In this case, it will be the MA transfer complete interrupt. On the wake up, we will have the LED blinking with period of one second. And this is added to check if MCU has actually turned it into run mode after the transfer complete the main interrupt. So just to review the main steps, in our main after button press, we have LP BAM init. Let's check what's inside. In LP BAM init, we have S runway states clock and system powers configured, as well as the configuration of the system clock. In scenario init, we have the initialization of peripherals, which are active in LP BAM mode. Now we have a very important function, which is scenario build. This is where the queue is initialized with this function, queue build. Here, we only need to add the buffers needed for our I2C transfer. The most important one is buffer temp, where we're going to store the 12 bytes received from the IMU. Coming back to our main dossier, the two remaining functions are scenario link and scenario start. In scenario start, we have a function which is starting the DMA channel in linked list mode. And here we have to add the starting function for PWM of low power timer one, which is triggering I2C free transfer. As a last change, we modify the default linker file as in our application, we will only use SRAM4, which is the portion of SRAM addressable in smart run domain. After that, we can build and run our project.